thank you for tuning in to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Our topic, your vibe attracts your tribe, the power of sisterhood. Joining us are special guests, Gail Moore, backed by popular demand, and <laughs> Ella Johnson. Welcome Yay! to Sister Power, ladies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm so excited. Gail was on before, and then she was on your show, Ella. And yes, listen to your show. I said, I've got to meet this lady. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. And, and, and you know I'm what? honored. Yes, yes. <laughs> she is really she's special. I mean, Ella has got more. I've got more comments on this show and sharing on your show. People are still calling about these shows, and wow. they're saying for, for you. She, um, Ella, they're saying, you know, because my husband's mo mother's name uh, is Ella. And yes. so all these people are calling on, you know, is Ella your family? I'm like, family? No, we're not. Yes, at all. of course. And my, brother <laughs> my brother called me and he was like, you know what? You didn't even ask her about Johnson because my, my family is Johnson. Really? And you're from Alabama, yes. just like me. Yes. So my yeah. brother's like, she might be a kid. She might be a cousin. I'm, like, I'm cousin. telling you. Anyway, I yeah. want to tell you that just right on the air in front of everybody. We I made you related. <laughs> your vibe attracts your tribe. That's what we're hey. talking about today, you know? So, yes. you know, I have an organization, Hawaii's uh, Sisters Empowering Hawaii, Hawaii's foremost women's empowerment organization. And I love that both of you ladies have organizations. So, so Gail... You are the founder of a young women's movement entitled Just Girls. Tell us about this organization. Just Girls is actually a, an organization that was really created um, from speaking in so many schools. And after, but you know, in school assemblies, you only have a few minutes. And but so after the assembly was over, all of these girls they, they would be lined up like a hundred deep. To the, to the point where the bell would ring and they would just stay in line and the principal would look at me and say, okay, Gail, just keep them because I know they, they, wanna, they got questions. But they had so many questions. That birthed just girls because I thought I need to do something to give these girls a platform to share their experiences, to vent their frustrations and find real answers for them. And that's the folks, but I thought I was just going to do it for like 30 girls. 800 girls showed up the very first time out the box. Since then, it's been running 1,500, 2,000 girls that have been doing it for like 10 years. Yes. It, 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 you know, we got gangbangers uh, coming who hate it, who are in rivalry ooh, together. Yes. But when they leave, baby, they are in tears and hugging each other. The penitentiaries would call and bring busloads of their women just to be, and they'd call and say, is it okay? And I'm like, yes, bring them. We want them to be involved. Just put them in regular clothing. I don't want them to be standing out like, you know, embarrassing thing. But um. Right. It has been a very, very successful situation where these young women relate to other young women and they embrace one another. Because women, we have more in common with each other, which is what I tell the girls, than we do uh, to resent one another. You know, we all love closing. We love to be loved. We love to be accepted and honored and adored. You know, we, you know the fighting has got to stop. That's just not ladylike at all to me. That's right. That's okay. true. It's very in true. The schools, they have so much fighting and violence. The principals would call and say, girl, Gail, the, the girls are beating up the guys. You need Ooh. to come. And yeah, they, some of them are hotheads because they just they're upset. People are, are right. hurting so much Absolutely. right now. That was mm -hmm. why that's why I developed the Just Girls program. I like it. I like it. Ella, Ella, my new baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are the president and CEO of two businesses, Mahogany yeah. Motivations and Women at Work International. Please tell our viewers about your businesses. Well, I'll start with uh, Mahogany Motivations. How I came up with Mahogany, this is a funny story. I used to sell Mary Kay back in the day and my color was Mahogany Bronze. So I just adopted that Mahogany theme so that's where the name comes from, Mahogany. And I love to motivate people, but I'm a writer. And I have four books out there, which is a compilation of the Torn series, which I am definitely looking to have that turn into a movie. So 
just stay tuned for that. Wow, that's, but it's that's a, dumb. it's a, oh yes, absolutely. And then the other organization is Women at Work International. That's my nonprofit 501c3. And I'm from Alabama. And this, this dream of having this nonprofit started from me as a young girl. I would, uh, we were very poor. We grew up very poor. And I remember as a young girl making a promise to God saying, you know, I'll always come back and give back. And so Women at Work International is a nonprofit that was started to go back to Alabama. And what we do is every Thanksgiving, we go back and feed families. Um, and I just wanted to stretch my faith a little. And like three years ago, we started doing it in Africa as well, because I feel like if we can feed one, we can feel the feed a thousand, right? <laughs> it's the same God. It's, it's the, the same, same God. God. Yeah. It's the same God. Yeah. And he's everywhere. So he's and you in know, Africa, and, just and, like you know, I like, I like how we put, we, we definitely make it a faith-based situation. Everything oh, that yeah. we do at Yes I Can is faith-based. Yes. Because yeah. you have to give these young people scripture. That is, God is the only healer. He's the only one that can really change your life and give, give you the joy that you're looking for, that you Absolutely. think you're looking for in a man. Yeah. We just have, they just have, they just have the, the wrong information. They just don't have it correct. But when you, you go and inspire them and encourage them, like they do with Ella's organization, with Minds and, and with what with Sister Power, all of these things, like I said earlier on the show, we don't, you can't have enough. I'm telling you, you can't have enough. You and I, I, you know, just like all of the ladies here, we love people and we empower love one people. another. We bring our resources together because we have one common goal. And that is to bring people to Christ. The end of the day, that At is the end, the end of the result. day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's what that's, it's all about. That's what we have in common. Yeah. At yes. the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. All about Because it. in this day and time, in this climate, you need to run. If I wasn't saved, I would run to get saved. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I would be looking for Jesus's feet. Give me a toe, even. Oh, I, I, I would. Really, I'm so glad that I do know him because it does yeah. give you that foundation of security. Yes. And you know, at the yeah. end of the day, regardless of what these political people do, what the one one percent people try to do to us, God is our source, and He already promised. He told us, he warned us that this was going to happen. And he said, I'm going to take care of you. So don't worry about it. Don't Keep worry about me. a thing. Well, don't you know, worry about a thing. The moon is up there. Man is just trying, just getting on the moon. So that, that's one of the answers right there. But if, if people are just tuning into Sister Power, your vibe attracts your tribe. And so my tribe is, of course, my sister. I've had my tribe, tribe extends way back 60 years, I've had the same girlfriends who are there for me. So Ella, I want to ask you, who is your tribe? Um, a lot of people. I, you know, I, I don't really define it by whether it's a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, because God uses anybody. I have mm -hmm. even met people that may be under the influence of alcohol that have, have influenced me in some kind of way. So yes. my tribe, I, I, I am a tra people are attracted to me because of the message that God is trying to give me and he will use anyone willing to be used. I think I was sharing with you uh, before the show uh, when we first talked, Sharon, that, you know, I found God in my desire to turn over from the club life in the club. I know mm. it's like, Ella, really? Yes, really. Yes. Because God mm. will find you wherever you are. It's not. And at He's that everywhere. time. I wasn't going to church. So I said, if he's going to find me, he's going to have to find me where I'm at. And that's where I was. And, and listen, he used that man. He used the, the yes. beggar. He uses whomever. Yeah. So my vibe is, oh yeah, my vibe is to serve him. And my tribe are the people that he uses to get me there. I yes. love that. Gail, who is your tribe? My tribe are, are people who I have likeness with. People who uh, will support what I believe in, because I don't really, I'm not really big on, I mean, but, but I'm, I'm like Ella too. God has used all kinds of people to get me where I am right now, you know, but my tribe, the people, in my vibe, really, I connect with people who are on a positive, who love to love people. I like to keep myself around people who are the positive thinkers and believe in the word of God and can, can encourage, you know, and inspire. Right. And then we go collect those other ones who may not know we are there to inspire them. But my, my, my vibe is definitely always going to be bottom line. I'm coming to love on you. 
Mm-hmm. Not right. to hurt you, I not to slam it. you, not not yes. to cut you down, but just to yeah. make you let you know that God is not mad at you. I'm not yes. mad at you. Yes. Let's just love each other and be there for one another. Man, uh, we, we couldn't need that more in our lives for the women, especially. Especially. Know? Yeah, especially because, for women. Go ahead. Because women are running the households a lot more now. So we need them strong because the world has continuously tried to strip the man from the household. And in a lot of cases, they have done that. So women, we need to prepare them um, because it's a different world than when I was growing up. Uh, You know, back in the day when I was growing up in Alabama, if you needed something, you could go knock on your neighbor's door and ask for it. And it was, Mm -hmm. it was no thing, Sharon and Gail. It was nothing. Nowadays, we're a little taken back by that. We're like, I don't know. Because you're you're afraid you you might get raped. You don't know, you know, and that's what we live in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's and so we, we have, have to adjust to. ourselves accordingly. Yeah. You know, we do Absolutely. have to adjust ourselves. So we can't be as careless. And as that was, those were the good old days. Yeah. yeah those are the good old days. We could go to our neighbor's house and say, hey, you know, I need a cup of sugar. And they would gladly give it to you. Now, I mean, I'm from California. You don't be, you don't bother people. You don't get to know your, your neighbors. You leave yeah. people alone. And that is just not the way God created his people. We Absolutely. are to always embrace one another and we need it like COVID when COVID came oh my god it, it just took the relationships and people need to be around each other and see the smiles and and say hey how you doing and that that that's what they're trying to rip strip this country of but that is yeah. not God's purpose for our lives right at all, no, at it's all. Not. so I don't I don't I don't play into it well you know uh I think I, I had a conversation with you about this Gail about COVID my husband and I both came down with COVID and as you know, yeah, I'm his caretaker. So when he had COVID and I'm sick with it, what do you do? I reached out, I sent an email, I reached out to my tribe. This is why you go, go, ladies, mm-hmm. listen to this. It's easy to have a tribe when you're doing well. You feel preach. good. Yeah, you, preach. But mm-hmm. if you don't have a tribe when you are down and out, you haven't lived yet. My yes. tribe right. came through, they cooked dinner for us, they delivered groceries, the small things we take for granted. Yeah. Yes. You know, well, you just, know, you know, to add to that, um, yeah. your, your vibe is your tribe. You know, it's if you want to do, you know, the saying, I know Ella knows this and you do too, Sharon. If you want to know where you're going, you look at the people that you're hanging out with. So your vibe, it, it does definitely attracts your tribe. You know, I don't, I'm not a crackhead, so I don't hang out with crackheads. Right. You know, I know, but so, you know, you, it's important to me the kind of women that I put around myself because they're, they're going to influence my life and I'm mine there to influence their life, you know? So, yeah. you know, one of the, I'm a quotes person. And I, I, I remember reading this quote once about if you really want to test the people that you're around, raise your standards because they'll yeah. either go or they're going to grow. Stay back. Yeah, that's very true. That is so. They're going to go or grow. Yeah. One or the other. They're going to leave. Yeah. Yes. I'm right in there. Because people are in your life for a reason or a season. Or a season. You, you know, better anyway. believe it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so it's left up to us to decide okay, well, Lord, if God is in control of your life, that He's going to lead you to the right people. Amen. To make that connection, you know, to create your, your, your tribe. You know, but yeah. it is so depending on what kind of vibe you're putting off on people. A Say lot of it. these women are, are doing a lot of things, but I always tell them, is it getting you the results that you're looking for? Right. You know, if you're hanging around people that are putting you down or put, are just down in life, you either, you have to lift them up to your level, mm. but you cannot bow to their level. That's right. And that's why when we are around people, we can't conform to what they're doing or we can't, we can't. be a, we mm-hmm. can't be the light they need right no we mm-hmm. can't be the light they need absolutely you have to we have to stay focused on who yeah. we are because all three of us know that we're called god yeah, has man. given us a specific yeah. thing to do a duty and you have to man your post regardless of where you are in your life whatever yeah. circumstances god allows you to be in you still have to stay focused and i heard megan good say that uh, earlier you know, when you know your call, the things around you don't really influence you. They, they don't bother you. Because you, when you know, no, I can't go this direction. I must stay right here. That's because right. this is where the Lord has called me. 
You know, it's very, very important. It yeah. is. Well, Ella. Because it's a lot. Yeah, I know. a lot going on. But Ella, you know, I just want to switch a little gear to your author. What motivated you to write the Torn series and your newly released children's book, Love You More? Listen, I this is this answer that I'm going to give is is 100 percent the truth because I am 100 about everything. I lost my children to the state of Florida because my husband was accused was allegedly accused of uh, touching my daughter, and that turned into an entire case with the state of Florida. And my children were removed from my home at that moment when that happened to me. I was either going to live or die. Can you imagine? It's one thing to lose your children by death, but I was losing mine to the system. So I had to make a decision. I'm either going to be mad for the rest of my life, or I'm going to use this to help someone else. And I pulled out a tablet because back then I didn't have a laptop. I pulled out a tablet and a pen and I just started writing. I didn't care what it sounded like. I just wanted to get it out. And every day that I was going through this, I would journal and I was able to put my real raw emotions into my writing. And that's why when people read my story, they felt what I felt because I wrote it as I was allowing myself to relive it. So it's a true story. It's based on true events in my life. So what motivated me, Sharon, was the fact that I didn't want to die and I wanted to do something positive for someone else. So I did it and I couldn't stop writing because I wrote four books. And each of the books are over 400 pages each, but it is definitely a movie and a series. Just putting that out there here on Sharon's show. Think yes. Hawaii. Right. <laughs> you heard it but here you know first. Let people. the Lord use you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so where can we purchase these books, Ella? Right now, the best thing to do is just find me on Facebook, uh, Ella Johnson. Find me there. And the reason is because I want to introduce you guys to the relaunch of the Torn series. We are currently relaunching that. It's getting re-edited and all of that because we're going to break it down a little more and turn it into, you know, the movie. That's that's because I've already written the script as well. And I didn't even know how to write a script. I Googled it. Google is your best friend, let me tell you. <laughs> but I have written the script. I've written the script because I'm ready for this. This is a lifetime movie. That is all has always been my dream. Uh, and so that's what we're working towards. And now the children's story, that was motive, the motivation from that came from my sister recently passed. And I was the one that was there with her when she took her last breath. And she always said, love you more to everybody. And I made a promise and I keep my word. I made a promise to my sister that I would always look out for her nephew, I mean, her grandkids, her kids who had to say goodbye because she always believed in me. I don't care if I sold a button, my sister purchased it. She was very supportive of me. So I had to do this for her. And so I turned the book and made her a character. She was an angel. And the children in the book, I, I, I wanna write books that are real life in our, in our day and time because pie in the sky, somebody else can do that. For me, I want to reach kids and reach them in their heart because they're gonna be leaders one day. So we have to start with them. And in my book, I used a homeless man and these kids saw him and our kids these days, they look at homeless people and they just think they're nothing and they poke fun at them and throw rocks and all this like they're not human too. So I wanted to change that mindset. So I wrote a book about a homeless man and the kids, my sister, the angel inspired her grandson in the book to do something. No, you don't have to just look at him. He wants love. And when you go do it, tell him that God loves him. And so that's what the book was about. And I don't wanna give the whole thing away cause you guys can go to Amazon and get the book. But uh, <laughs> But in the end, she tells him, I'm always with you. And he said, I love you, grandma. And she says, I love you more. And that's why I titled the book, Love You More, and dedicated it to my sister who recently passed. I'm loving this Beautiful story. story. It's a beautiful yeah. true story. And this is what I love yeah. about it. But I want to come to you, Gail. How do we build a genuine sisterhood? Well, first of all, you have to be genuine. Mm. And you, oh. Oh, yeah. First, first of all, you. We, it starts okay. with us. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. We have to be genuine, and you can only be genuine. You can only. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, <laughs> I think Sharon's about to shout. She likes me. that. She's like, "Woo!" <laughs> I'm shouting with you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's one thing to give out information, but you first. It first starts with you. That's it. it. it how do you become genuine? 
you can't be genuine unless you have God because it takes love to be genuine. Yes. In order to reach out to people, you can only do it through the love of God because he is love. If you're looking for love, that's where love is. That's how you start it. And the love that he has placed inside of all, all of us three here and thousands of others, that's the love that is automatically going to reach out, like Ella was saying about the, the homeless. When I was a child, my father, there was a, home, there was a homeless guy that continued to come to our church. He was filthy. I mean, very dirty. He'd smelled, you could smell him just in, sitting in service. Way, and, even if, and he always sat in the back. My father one day, I'll make a long story short, my father one day took this man to our beautiful home. And, put, and we just got a brand new bathroom, blue carpet, white cream furniture, bought that man to our home, put him in our bathtub. He had sores all over his body. His hair had never been washed. My father took that man, washed his clothes, gave him a bath, cut his hair. Now I'm just a kid looking on. That impacted my life. And I think that is why, where I see the genuine, my father was a genuine man because he truly was a man of God. First, he was a man of God. And when you are a woman or a, a, a human being and you really have God on invested in you, you are going to love those people. So it must start with you being genuine first in yeah. order to attract your tribe a genuine tribe and to show them genuinely true, true love. You know, what's, we know, you know, like my husband and I, we're, we're thinking about, we have a, we, we haven't, we have, we were beginning this, this um, youth organization It's called the love center. And so I told him, I said, baby, if we're going to have the love center, let's really love people for real. Yes. You know, we don't have to fake love. Amen. We can just love people. Yes. You know, Let's, I, yes. I mean, that's where I'm at with it. I want to be, like you said, what is genuine? You got to, you got to be genuine first and really that's love right. people. Because people know the difference. They know the people difference. People can tell the difference. Yes. They can, yeah. because you're not going to be able to go the long yeah. way. You're just yeah. going to go so far. You're only going to do it as far as people are watching. As long as people are watching, yeah, you're, there you go. As long as there the cameras go. are off, you better get out of my face. Yeah. Yes. And when, when they call you and you don't feel like it. Yeah. Because a lot of yeah. times they're going to call <laughs> and you, you may not feel like it, but yeah. love will take over. If love is there, it will take over. Well, and you say, know, well, we come to, you know, the golden rule. So this is the golden rule. Do unto others, you others you as you would have them yeah, do yeah. unto you. Yeah. Just, right. And I think that if women and men, especially women, because we are the backbone of this society, right? especially black women. We are, we are, mm -hmm. we the are the, the salt. We are the salt in the, in the soup with, with the salt and the bread. <laughs> we are that, we are that entity that God, that's, that's what's so powerful. Everything that, that you women are sharing right now shows the power. Like what Ella's doing when she, when she went through this whole thing with her, her husband and that whole thing with her child being molested or whatever that power it was the, that shows how much power we have invested in us that's the yeah. part that stands up that's how powerful we are god has invested that in us that's power that took over yeah. you and made you say you know what i'm not going to die i'm going to yeah. live yeah and that's all this whole thing is about making the choices and saying you know what I'm not going to let this thing get me down. We have to do it every day. Every day, you we know, sure we have challenges. Yes. Every single day. Every single yes. one of us right now has yes. gone through and is going through something right now. Yes, right now. Right now. So, Ella. But our power. The power, power is going to take. Yes, that power. <laughs> so, if, if you're tuning in to Sister Power now, your vibe attracts your tribe. The power in sisterhood. Ella. Yes. If you could change anything you've been through, would you? Absolutely not. It, 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 those things, it's just like Joseph. If Joseph, it, Joseph had to pick being thrown in the pit, being sold into slavery, being accused of rape. If he knew he was going to go through that, he would have never chosen. He would have said, I got to go through all that for the palace. But I guarantee you now, if you ask Joseph, he would say no, because look at the reward. That's just like a woman when she's in pain. And I've been in labor when she's in labor pain for six times. Yeah, six kids. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. But it's something about when you're in labor and you push that baby out, once that joy of that baby, you forget all about the pain. 
So you when you ask me, would I change a thing? No, because it was all necessary. Because it really, that's really what, what, where, why we're, where we are right now. That's right. Because of all of, that's why I was telling the young lady who, who called me this week and was ready to commit suicide. Oof. Well, because my parents don't love me and I've been raped and, you know, this guy invited her to church and on the way to church, he said, I need to stop by my house real quick. I left some food on and he invites her in and he rapes her and locks her into his house. You know, those kind of things, We, if we focus, it will bring you down. But you know what? You got. I want to love on her. I, I you want know, you, you to just connect wanna love me. On them. I do because I, she's yeah. gonna she's gonna help somebody, isn't she? She's gonna yeah. like what you just shared your story. That blessed my life because when I see your life, now I see what you've gone through. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. There's so much power in that. And I told Erica, you do not people need to hear what you've been through and how you made it through. That's right. You can't you can't jump off the edge now. Yeah. And it makes us stronger. It really does. Yes. I, I wouldn't make change a thing right now. No, me I neither. Am who mm -hmm. I am. No, and that's I, it. Yes, indeed. And I love me. That's another. That's thing. right. We love ourselves. Yes. That's you know absolutely. that's another thing you know thing that I always tell my husband. God is crazy about me. <laughs> he is so crazy <laughs> about me. But he really is. He loves me so much. That's the way I really feel. So there's nothing. No, I, I couldn't trade that love. For nothing. Right. And I wouldn't right. trade one moment of chaos. And trust me, honey, I have been through pure hell in my life. Yes. I hear Tell you. me. Tell, Tell me. Ella, in 10 seconds rough. of that, you know, I, we're going to have to have a part two. I hope you ladies are available in two <laughs> weeks to do a part Always. Two Always. 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 <laughs> five yes. attracts your tribe. Give us, closing in 10 seconds, some healing words. Don't give up. Um, if God brought you to it, he can take you through it. God allows things to come on you because he knows what he put in you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just hang in there. It's going to be all right. Trust me. If yes. I did it and I went through it, because let me tell you something, when those men were thrown in the lion's den, they were in there mm -hmm. and nothing touched them. You're going to go mm -hmm. through the fire sometimes, but I guarantee you, if you trust God, you'll come out, not even smelling Always. like smoke. Real talk. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gail, Real and Ella Johnson, thank you, Queens, for your expertise and your wisdom. And in closing, a flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It thank just you. blooms. Bloom where you're planted, ladies. Thank you for spending your time with thank Sister Power. You. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.